A tracheostomy tube is a medical device which acts as an artificial airway. It is inserted directly into the trachea through a surgically created hole called a stoma. Breathing is done mostly through the tracheostomy tube and bypasses the upper airway. When a person with a tracheostomy tube has surgery or a medical procedure, there are several things which must be sorted out ahead of time to avoid severe and even life-threatening events. Join me this week as I discuss having surgery or a medical procedure with a tracheostomy tube. One of the most important things to know about a tracheostomy tube is if it's cuffed or uncuffed. A cuffed tracheostomy tube has a balloon-like feature at the distal end of the tube. The balloon can be inflated or deflated. When the cuff is inflated, all the inhaled and exhaled air enters and leaves the respiratory tract via the tracheostomy tube. With the cuff inflated, the ventilator is providing full respiratory support to the person. An uncuffed or cuffless tracheostomy tube does not have the balloon-like feature at the distal end of the tube. When an uncuffed tracheostomy tube is in place, air will flow in and out of the tracheostomy tube and will go to the lungs, but air may also leak around the tracheostomy tube and will travel through the upper airway. Knowing if the tracheostomy tube is cuffed or uncuffed is essential information and should be told to the medical provider who is doing the procedure or surgery. When having a procedure or surgery, there are two major groups of medicine which will be used. Please note, this is not the correct pharmaceutical groupings of the medicine. Instead, this is a very simplified understanding of the medicine used during procedures and surgeries. The first type of medicine used for procedures and surgeries is called sedation. This medicine will make the person sleepy and may cause memory loss. The amount of sedation medicine used will vary greatly from doctor to doctor and from procedure to procedure. Sometimes enough sedation medicine is given to cause the person to sleep, while other times only a small dose is given which just makes the person feel less agitated. While using sedation, the person's breathing is monitored. In general, no breathing assistance is needed. The second type of medicine used for procedures and surgery is called general anesthesia. Anesthesia often causes paralysis, memory loss, pain relief, and unconsciousness. With general anesthesia, the person's ability to breathe is affected. General anesthesia causes muscle paralysis. This often inhibits the person's breathing muscles and makes it very hard or even impossible for the person to breathe on his own. In order to continue to breathe, the person must be connected to a ventilator to receive full respiratory support. In the general population, a breathing tube, which is also called an endotracheal tube, is used. This is a long tube which is inserted through the mouth and down into the trachea. A cuff is inflated to create a sealed circuit. This allows the ventilator to do the work of breathing. If a person has a tracheostomy tube, a cuff tracheostomy tube must be used. If a person usually wears an uncuffed tracheostomy tube, the tracheostomy tube must be changed to a cuff tracheostomy tube before being given general anesthesia. With the cuff inflated, the ventilator is providing full respiratory support to the person. If an uncuffed tracheostomy tube is used when given general anesthesia, air will flow in and out of the tracheostomy tube, but air may also leak around the tracheostomy tube and will travel through the upper airway. There is a possibility the person will not receive enough respiratory support during the procedure. This may lead to respiratory distress a heart attack, lack of oxygen to the organs, lack of oxygen to the brain, etc. Before having any surgery or medical procedure, please ask your medical provider which type of medicine will be given. If the medical provider says it will be sedation, twilight sedation, or IV sedation, this means the medicine being used will only cause sleepiness. 
If the clinician states general anesthesia will be used, this means breathing assistance during the procedure or surgery will be required and an endotracheal or cough tracheostomy tube will need to be used. In March 2021, I had a procedure done to have a feeding tube placed into my intestines. The anesthesiologist was set on changing out my tracheostomy tube. I have never had this done before when having a procedure or surgery. I explained to the physician it was not necessary. My tracheostomy tube has a cuff on it. I can inflate the cuff and be switched over to the hospital ventilator. Give me the magic potion and I am good to go for surgery. The anesthesiologist agreed he would not change out my tracheostomy tube. After the procedure, I woke up in the post-anesthesia unit. I was struggling to breathe. I kept pulling on my tracheostomy tube. There was something wrong. Although I was extremely drugged from the anesthesia, it felt as though I was not getting full breath support from my ventilator. As I touched the side of my tracheostomy tube, it was a bloody mess. When I looked down at my fingers, they were covered in blood. Moreover, my tracheostomy tube holder was not secure. My tracheostomy tube was extremely loose. When I woke up more fully from the anesthesia and when I was able to look in a mirror, I figured out why I was struggling to breathe. The anesthesiologist took out my tracheostomy tube and must have inserted a larger tracheostomy tube for surgery. This ripped my tracheostomy site. After surgery, the anesthesiologist took out the larger size tracheostomy tube and reinserted my tracheostomy tube. Now, my tracheostomy tube did not provide a snug fit. Air was leaking out of my airways from my ripped tracheostomy site. The larger tracheostomy tube also damaged my trachea. Now, when I inflated my tracheostomy tube, it did not provide a complete seal. Air was leaking up my airways and out my nose and mouth. The day after my procedure, my tracheostomy site became infected. A few days later, the bacteria traveled down into my lungs and caused pneumonia. The lesson I learned from this experience is I need to have contact with the anesthesiologist before the procedure. If the medical provider feels my tracheostomy tube needs to be exchanged, the correct size tracheostomy tube should be available on the day of the procedure. I never want to have my tracheostomy site damaged again. It was very painful and made my tracheostomy tube not work properly until my trachea healed. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye.